High Adventure. In tonight's story, we present Desert Marriage. This here's the eyes point for miles around. See if you can get Major Rawlings now. Uh, not much hope of that. Still, got to keep trying, I suppose. The badger calling Lynx. Badger calling Lynx. Uh, the bleeding batteries are getting low by now. Keep trying. Badger calling Lynx. Badger calling Lynx. Are you receiving me? Lynx to Badger. Lynx to Badger. Or you copped it. Over. You need copped it, sir. We got spotted by a jerry convoy of trucks and half-tracks. We got clear, but Corporal Hawks and Private Thompson was killed by machine gun fire. Over. So there's just two of you. Right. I want you to head back for base. We'll meet there. Huge convoys of German troops, tanks and equipment are heading east to the front. Ooh. So I'm advising you to go south and steer well clear. Over. And you, sir? Well, we can wait for you at the fuel dump. Over. Negative. I'm going by the fastest route east to try and dodge them. Hmm. There's still a few gallons of fuel at our Makara dump. Enough for us to get through. Best of luck, Badger. Over and out. Ah, uh, so we're on our own, eh? Uh, but I'd rather be going south like us than trying to work our way through Rommel's Africa Corps. Let's take a look at the map and see what we're in for. <laughs> This here is really the story of Spike Tyler, who was one of the toughest men I ever knew. I'd seen him fight over German patrol single-handed, armed only with a Bren gun. I'd seen him lead a group of volunteers to rescue a batch of prisoners, and in doing so, put to flight an entire brigade of Italian troops. Oh, I could describe a dozen more such incidents to illustrate Tyler's courage. What happened to us in the North African desert that September of 1942 reduced this brave young man to an half-crazed, whimpering lump of flesh and bones. We were part of the long-range desert group, and our job was to patrol hundreds of miles behind the enemy lines, to spy on their troop movements, often aided by nomadic Berber tribesmen. Now we were on our own, just Spike Tyler and me, with 700 miles of desert between us and our base. Looks a long way on the map, Sergeant. Yeah, it depends on the route. 700, give or take 10 this way, and 900 plus this way. The convoy that shot us up heading southwest. So if we take the shortest route, we'll bump into them again. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. Yep, I think the longer route the best. See, there's a dump here, yeah. and another one here. Uh-huh. So there'll be no shortage of petrol and food. And bleeding sand. Oh, crikey. I could use a couple of weeks leaving Cairo. Cold baths, dancing girls, cold beer, more dancing girls. Hey, 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 that's enough. Now start the engine. I wonder if Major Rawlings will make it. If his luck, he can't miss. Anyway, all I'm worried about is will we make it? Yeah, with your luck, we can't miss either. We drove south for a day and a half, seeing nothing but sand and the bare rocky outcrop. We refueled and restocked at the first dump and then headed due east. In the early evening, we drove between two rocky hills, low ones, not more than a hundred feet high. We'll rest for the night on the other side of those hills. Are there any oases marked on the map round about here? Yeah, uh, nope, not a thing. Even the contours aren't marked for this far south. Uh, so even these hills ain't there? Nope, just a blank space. Ooh, bloody marvellous, isn't it? But nobody in their right mind would fight a war all this far south. That's why the Ordnance boys haven't bothered. Yeah, well, nobody's right mind fights anywhere, if you ask me. 
Give the bleeding politicians a catapult each and stick them in Wembley Stadium and let them fight it out for themselves. That's yeah. what I say. Funny talk from a man who's earned himself two medals. Uh, well, if you've got to fight, you've got to fight and make the best of it, I suppose. You don't have to like it, though. Yeah, what are you doing, Sarge? Just keep driving straight. I'm going to man the brand. I saw some movement up on our right. Oh, there won't be no cherries down there. I don't imagine it, if that's what you're thinking. Or maybe it's a bunch of wandering wogs. All right, them's wogs all right, and friendly ones. I can't see the blighters, but just keep on driving. There's a few on the other side as well. It's like shooting at shadows. What's wrong, Sarge? Ah, uh, must have hit the engine. OK, over the side and take it from there. Hello? What now? Yeah, they know they've got us in a trap, so why waste their ammunition? Hang on. I'm going to jump into the back and give them a bit more hell with a Bren. No, stay put and let's see what happens. I'll tell you what happens. They cut our bleeding throats and leave us for the ruddy vultures. That's what happens. Why should they? Most of these nomad groups know us as friends. Yeah, well, maybe the news hasn't spread this far, sir. Now, don't risk both our necks unnecessarily. Just wait and see. OK, it's your neck, too. Yeah, got a fag on you. Mine's all gone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you are. Ah, oh, tar. Well, I wish them Johnnies up there had let us know what's on their bleeding minds. I wonder. Well, tell us what you're wondering, Sarge. Well, maybe it's a problem of identification. I think we should put that Union Jack of ours on a radio aerial. Yeah, and that might bring more bullets our way. Nope, I don't think so. Let's try it. I'll stick it up, but I'll bet these blighters don't even know what it means. <sighs> Big white king from across murky waters with more warriors than sand in desert brings your greetings and beads play uh, music and bring forth your maidens cut that <laughs> cackle spike it's not funny at a time like this all right there it flies sergeant it'll either get us killed or make him surrender duck down again before you get your head uh, shot off well there's not much happening maybe they think the union jack's some kind of code signal i said cut that cackle you're getting on my nerves. Hello! Here you are. Do you hear that? Yeah. First they shoot at us, then they wish us merry hello. Always knew these wogs had funny customs. Hello! Identify yourself. Soldiers! English! Put down your weapons and walk into the open where I can see. Yeah, well, that's it, Sarge. We walk out and we get a bullet in the nut. Nope. He's just being careful. Come on. There's nothing to lose. Uh, only me future, that's all. Well, I walked out into the open and Spike Tyler followed, grumbling behind me. For a full minute, nothing happened, apart from seeing a number of shadowy figures quickly passing across the top of the hills on the other side. Then we saw a tall man in a flowing white robe and a burnoose walking towards us. He stopped a few feet away and eyed us. So, you are English? Yeah. We're driving east to rejoin our forces. English, eh? You know London? I should too. I was born there. Then you can tell me the name of the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, ah, yes, a monument outside Hyde Park entrance. Well, it's got more than one entrance, you know. The one where people stand on boxes and talk to others. Ah, you mean Speaker's Corner. Let's see, a monument, eh? You must mean the Marble Arch. Very good. It is a Marble Arch. You see, I have been to London. Crikey. The blighter is being careful, ain't he? Shut up. And you, the short one, you tell me two roads that lead to your Trafalgar Square. Well, uh, that ain't easy. You, you see, there's quite a few. You will answer the question. I am waiting. If you are really English, you will know. Well, there's a strand. Yes, that's one. Another one? Well, there's a mall. Ah, very good. Yes, I think you are really Englishman. Oh, so it's OK if we go on, eh? I insist on offering you my hospitality for a while. My encampment is not far from here. Thank you, we accept. <laughs> Our vehicle's damaged and uh, it will need repair. I will have some of my men bring it to the camp. Please, follow me. I trust you can both ride camels? Oh, no. Do we have to? I mean, I might be able to fix up the jeep in a tick. Just do as he says, Spike. 
Oh, these people get offended if you refuse their hospitality. Oh. We need to keep them friendly, now don't worry. He obviously likes us, and it'll be a pleasant break for a few days. The Arab party consisted of more than 50 men. We were mounted on camels, and it was almost dark when we arrived at their camp, which was beside a real storybook type of oasis lined with date palms. Their leader... Sheikh al Karim showed us to a fair sized tent and assured us we would be given every comfort. A woman came and attended to our needs and then led us to the Sheikh's tent where we were to join him for the evening meal. I enjoyed it. A big improvement on eating hard rations and sleeping on the sand like we've been doing for the past eight weeks. After the meal, I returned to our tent, but Spike insisted on taking a stroll round the encampment. Oh, uh... Sorry, I, I didn't see you standing there. It is all right. <laughs> I can see the water on your face. Lepping it up like a puppy dog, was you? It is cooler and sweeter to drink directly from the pool. At that moment, a cloud passed from the moon's face. And for the first time, Spike could see the girl's features clearly. His mouth went dry and his fingers clenched at the sight of her. It was the most beautiful face he had ever seen. Now, Spike was no ladies' man. He had a love em and leave em philosophy. But this was something entirely different. As though this beautiful Arab girl had cast a spell of enchantment over him. Seeing Spike's expression, the girl instinctively covered the lower part of her face with a yashmak, leaving only the brightness of her eyes exposed. She went to move away to the tents. Here, yeah, hey, hey, don't go. I want to talk to you. I cannot stay. It is forbidden for us to talk. Why, well, it does no harm. What's your name? Yasmin. Yasmin. It's a nice name. Sounds like a flower. I'm Edwin Tyler. My friends call me Spike. Why do you have to cover such a pretty face like that? It is our way. Where'd you learn to speak such good English out here in the desert? My father was educated in your country. Ah, and you learned it from him, I see. The, uh, the tall bloke, the sheik... Is he your old man? Yes, Sheikh Al Karim. I, I must go now. Here, here, or hang we must not be tent. seen alone together. Listen, can't we go somewhere alone? You know, just for a chat, talk about each other. It would cause trouble. No, oh, I don't mean now. Tomorrow, just after it's gone dark. Look, there's a hill over there. I'll see you on the other side. It's the date. I, I cannot do oh, it. Come on, think it over, Yasmin. I'll be waiting there for you. You do not understand. As soon as it's dark. Enjoy your stroll, Spike? Not much to see, is there? Plenty. Look, you ain't gonna believe this, but I met a girl. I tell you, she's the most beautiful thing on two feet. Ah, you've been away from women so long, Spike, even an old crone who's gone bald would look like Betty Grable. Now, don't skip me, Sergeant. I'm serious. She fear made me eyes pop out. She was drinking water at the pool, and I got chatting to her. Now, look, all right, if you want me to be serious. Don't meddle with these women here. It's dangerous. If one is given to you by the sheik, then it's okay, but don't go around chatting them up. These people have got some damn funny ideas, and we can't afford to give offence in return for their hospitality. Are you listening to me? Yes. Her name's Yasmin. You're not listening! Oh, a sheik's daughter. You must be out of your tiny little mind. A sheik's daughter?! Take warning. Take warning, Spike. I know these people. And if you're caught with this girl, they'll bury you up to your neck in sand and deposit a few scorpions close by to keep you company. And lay off a Spike for your own sake. I've made a date with her for tomorrow night. Oh, no. The sun's gone to your head, it has. The finest specimen of female beauty I've ever seen. You're not to see her, and that's an order. I don't take orders when I'm an holiday. Don't you realise it's my life you're putting at risk as well? Just for a piece of skirt. Look, you call her that once more and I'll thump you, Sarge. And I mean it. I'm meeting her tomorrow night and nothing's going to stop me, see? Trying to reason with Spike Tyler was like trying to reason with a drunk. All I could do was hope it all turned out for the best. If the jeep was not too badly damaged, there was a possibility we could get away in a day or two without any harm being done. But that hope was dashed when we examined the vehicle the next morning. The fuel pump was shattered and the block cracked. Most unfortunate, I know. Yeah, it's going to be a long walk, uh, unless we Unless can... I can provide you with camel transport. 
Oh, but no. I doubt if you would survive such a long journey. Oh, we can't stay here forever, you know. I'm grateful for your kindness, and but I have we a must... better suggestion. Write a message to your superiors, and I will send it to, with two of my men to deliver it. And they will send transport for you. But that might take ages. Two, perhaps three weeks. Write the message now, and my men can leave almost immediately. Oh, it's so quiet out here in the desert. Huh? All I can see is your dark eyes. They're smiling. You happy? Yes. But uh, they're a bit frightened of what we're doing, eh? That is true. We've been meeting here for a week now. Yet you still wear that yashmuk thing? It is proper for me to do so. Yeah, my mate tells me that a girl will lower it to the man that she loves. Is that right? My face is for his eyes only. Oh, there. Now you can see my face. And what lies in my heart. Your eyes mean. Your eyes mean you're so, so beautiful. Come closer. You mean the affair's gone that far? I'm oh, this Pike. I wish you wouldn't tell me all this. Oh, but I'm crackish about the girl. I've got to tell someone. Put yourself in my boots, will you? If I was in your boots, I'd forget all about it and start running all the way to Cairo, mate. Don't you see? It can't go on like this. In a couple of weeks, we'll be leaving, and what then? Well, that's a problem I've been trying to work out. There's no solution except a secret bye-bye. Yeah? Well, we'll see about that. It would be a wonderful adventure. It's a very dangerous. Yeah, but with determination, we could make it. For the next two nights, I will collect food. The night after that, we can go. Look, I know a dump on the way with this plenty of food. No, no, we must not take a known route. It is better to travel far to the south. You, dressed as one of our people, a dumb servant. Yeah, you've got your head screwed on right, lass. I'll have to leave the field work to you. Here, roll back a little. Look at those stars. So bright. <laughs> I wish I knew how to read them. What the future holds for us. Stand up, <gasps> my daughter. My, my father. He has been watching us. Do as I tell you, Yasmin. You Englishman, lie as you were or you will die. Father, I, I w want to... Explain to you. I have seen your shame. There is nothing to be explained. There is. And I am not ashamed. I love this man. Love him? Yes. Real love? A love that will last through eternity? Or are you a plaything for him to enjoy while he is with our people? I do love her. So much so that I'd marry Yasmin if there was a way. Ah. So you would marry my daughter? Tomorrow. Now. The chance. It is not customary for our women to marry outside the community unless politically expedient. Father, please let us marry. I it is for you to make or break our laws. Ah, so it shall be. This man will marry you tomorrow. Now go, join the women. For a brief moment, Yasmin's eyes met Spike's, and then she turned on her heel, raised her yashmak, and walked away. Spike still lay on the ground, the grim-looking Sheik Karim's gun pointing at his belly. You may now stand up. Look, I want to thank you. Yasmin and I really do love each other. I want you to know that. I'll look after I promise and... I, I need no promises or assurances from you. Remember this. You are a man who has taken advantage of my hospitality. You have sullied the honor of my family. That is a truly terrible crime in this part of the world. She is not a cheap woman from Soho, yet you lay here with her in the disgusting manner I have seen of your people on Hampstead Heath. Look, you've got the wrong idea. Our meeting was in secret, see? I and wish to hear no more from you. You will marry Yasmin tomorrow according to our custom. Then you may do with her what you wish. She will no longer be my daughter, nor of our people. You mean you're going to let you marry her? Yeah, according to their custom, he says. Crikey, that's a turn up for the books. Your luck held out, Spike. His stay in England must have broadened his mind. So I'll be able to take her with us. And we can get married properly when I get a spot of leave. You know, I'm dying to see the face of the woman who can send a man like you overboard. She must be something like out of a fairy tale. I'm telling you, she is, mate. <laughs> 
found out from one of our hosts something of the ceremony. It's customary for the bride and groom not to see each other until after the wedding when he will be led to her. Towards midday, a large shelter was erected and a feast laid out. Spike and I were dressed as smartly as possible. A black-robed holy man came with several attendants and anointed Spike, and this was followed by a simple ceremony. Neither of us understood a word of what was being said. And then came the feast. The tension of the preceding hours faded as we watched the singing and dancing. Sheikh Karim was pleasant but rather formal in his manner. It was late in the afternoon when the holy man, in company with Sheikh Karim, came up to Spike. Come, we will take you to your bride. Oh, Ta, I was beginning to give up hope. We stood up. Spike walked between the sheik and the holy man while I followed a discreet distance behind. The rest of the people followed behind me. We walked down an avenue of black tents and turned a corner. And there stood Yasmin, her face bared and expressionless. And I gasped at her beauty. She wore around her neck a long black and scarlet cloak that reached to the ground. She was flanked on either side by a female attendant. Beyond Yasmin was a long, low bundle covered by a brightly coloured blanket. A, a dowry, I thought. Your bride awaits you. No, no, wait. You will do it according to custom. Go to her slowly and remove the cloak. From that moment, you may do with her as you wish. Take her cloak off? Well, all right. Spike slowly walked over to Yasmin and unfastened the clip that held her cloak. As it fell away, he staggered back. Yasmin! Yasmin! Oh, no! No, Yasmin! Oh, Yasmin! a sight so terrible I shall never forget it. A sight that reduced Spike Tyler from a courageous soldier to a gibbering idiot. As the cloak fell, we saw it was only Yasmin's head fixed on a pole. Spike fell back to his knees, sobbing with horror and grief. One of the female attendants went to the bundle and whisked off the blanket, revealing the rest of the girl's body. A moment later, only Spike and me were left alone, standing there. What could I do? What could I say to him? I struggled with him to our tent and forced him to lie down. He gibbered and wept like a man demented. In fact, that was what he was. His mental balance had been destroyed. A week later, an 8th Army motorised patrol came and picked us up, took us to safety behind our own lines. Although Sheikh Karim's hospitality continued until that day, he never spoke to us again. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.